hygiene in a food service environment. As someone who works in the food service industry, the following lesson will outline some non-negotiables or absolute rules which must always be followed when working with or near food. The reason why they are so important to understand is because unhygienic practices can actually cause a guest or a colleague to get seriously ill or even die and so it is a serious matter. So, in this lesson, we're going to look at what bacteria are, how spoilage bacteria are spread to food, and what you can do to prevent the spread of bacteria when working with food. What are bacteria? Bacteria are very tiny organisms, invisible to the human eye, and are often simply called germs. We find bacteria everywhere, on the ground, in the air, even in our bodies, and most of these bacteria are not harmful. But some bacteria, called pathogens, are harmful. When they come into contact with food, they make the food dangerous to eat. When this happens, we say the food has been contaminated. If a person eats contaminated food, the pathogens get a one-way ticket into the person's body and can cause food poisoning, which in some cases can even kill the person. This means that as people who work with and serve food, we must do everything we can to prevent the spread of pathogens. So now that we know what pathogens are, let's take a look at the possible ways that they spread to food. Food is contaminated through cross-contamination. Imagine touching rubbish and making your hands full of dirt. If you then touch other things with your dirty hands, you'll be spreading the dirt onto those items. The dirt can then find its way onto the guest's table and into their mouths. Dirty. Bacteria are transferred in the same way. It can be through your hands, through a plate, through cutlery or glassware, or through the air. It can be through a ketchup bottle or a tablecloth. That is why we keep all pieces of equipment clean and hygienic, because anything that they come into contact with can be contaminated. These are things that will be in direct contact with the guest's food, and if they are contaminated, they will spread germs to the guest. But what makes harmful bacteria extra dangerous is that unlike dirt, we can't always see when food has been contaminated by bacteria. This means that we need to have procedures in place that prevent the spread of germs and pathogens. Now let's talk about preventing cross-contamination. Spoilage bacteria don't only contaminate food and other surfaces, they also multiply, or increase in number, under certain conditions. In the same way that humans have difficulty surviving in scorching deserts or freezing snowstorms, but do well in conditions that are not too hot or cold, bacteria also need specific conditions to grow. Just like humans also need food and water to survive, bacteria also need a specific environment to survive and increase in number. They need warmth. Bacteria multiply most between 5 degrees Celsius and 65 degrees Celsius. This is known as the danger zone. That is why we refrigerate food to keep it fresh and often cook food before eating it. They need moisture. Bacteria grow very well in damp or moist conditions, but cannot survive in dry environments. Lastly, they need time. Bacteria multiply by splitting in half. This means that they can double every 20 minutes, so that in just 6 hours, one single bacterium can become 1 million bacteria. Knowing this, doesn't a steaming rubbish bag full of leftover food left in the sun for a few hours sound like the perfect place for bacteria to grow? Or what about your warm, damp hands? Or even your mouth? That's why there are a few procedures to follow when it comes to hygiene that will prevent the spread and multiplication of germs. Keep your body clean and hygienic. By practicing personal hygiene, you know that you have a clean start. Have another look at the lesson on personal hygiene for guidelines in this regard. Keep your hands clean and hygienic. Wash your hands regularly in between tasks after visiting the toilet, 
after sneezing or coughing, and after handling waste. If you don't, your hands become the perfect surface for the bacteria to travel from a contaminated area to other areas, and possibly the food. Waste storage areas must be well away from food preparation areas. Imagine if you have the bin right next to the fridge. It's not very far for the bacteria to travel from the bin to the food. Waste also often smells bad and attracts pests such as rats and cockroaches. Why do you think that's a problem? You guessed it, pests also carry and spread germs. Lastly, waste containers should be emptied regularly. This prevents too much waste and therefore too many bacteria from building up in the waste area. These containers themselves must also be cleaned regularly. Well done on finishing this lesson on hygiene in a food service environment.